Howdy gang and welcome back to pool school. Well, in Arizona, swim season is about one month away. I know we start a little earlier than most, but I thought this would be a great time to do a video lesson on what to test your pool chemistry for pre-season. There's a couple things you wanna check for that you don't have to check for year round. So what do you say we dive right in? Alrighty, so before we get started, I want to thank you once again for watching, remind you to like this video if you do, subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, and please share my channel with everyone you know who owns a pool. Alrighty, so as I said, during the pre-swim season and post-swim season, there is one or two specific things you also need to be testing your pool water for that's really important during the rest of the year you don't really need to so if you have not seen my video on the things that you need to test your pool water for on a weekly basis i'll put a link in the description below please watch that so that way you're not driving yourself excuse me, my nose is itching a little bit you're not driving yourself crazy trying to test for everything sometimes people make pool water chemistry just way too difficult okay so i wanted to show you the test strips that i recommend you use on a regular basis even though they test for a couple things that you won't need to test for except seasonally. Um, I still think they're worth the cost. People always ask me, well, why do you use the, the smaller ones? And the reason I do is because I go through mine so much faster and because I'm not, I don't want to spend extra money, I use the smaller ones. Anyway, the one I recommend for you is the AquaCheck 7. They're seven in one. They're also called AquaCheck Silver, obviously, I guess, because of the silver label. <clears throat> and the AquaCheck seven in ones they're available online you can find them i've seen them on amazon so you can check them out just look for them they're made by hatch h-a-c-h okay and what these test for and i'm going to look at it is they test for the following and the most important one is the last one they test for total hardness which is something again hardness is one of those things that if you have hard water to begin with there's nothing you can really do about it it's the kind of water that comes from your water source if you have water that is softer and it's not in the ideal level you can always add some calcium to your pool water in order to bring that up but again if you already have hard water there's not a whole lot you can do about it it also tests for total chlorine and free chlorine it tests for ph and it tests for alkalinity and then last and certainly not least and this is the important one for the pre-swim season and post-swim season in the spring and in the fall before people start hitting in the pool is the cyanuric acid level see that at the bottom Okay, that's your cyanuric acid level, and that's the big one. I really like these strips. They're very easy to use. You dip them in the pool. It even shows, see the little description there? See, that has, has the person's thumb and how to hold the strip and how to read it. So you dip it in the pool. It takes 15 seconds, kind of between 10 and 15 seconds, and you go through the scan, and it'll tell you what, what your readings are. But again, the big thing you're looking for is the cyanuric acid, okay? Cyanuric acid is critical. More on that in a second. So what do you say we go to a pool and check it out? Oh, real quickly, these are the ones that I regularly use on a weekly basis, again, because I don't need to test for cyanuric acid all the time. So to save money, because I go through these so quick, I get these. However, these also come, these are in a hundred, there's a hundred in here. So for your pool, as long as you keep these stored in a cool, dry place, I probably wouldn't stick them out in the sun or put them out in the elements. These things will last you a long time. And a hundred of these, if you're testing on a weekly basis, it's gonna last you almost two years. So it's a pretty good deal for two years worth of testing, all right? So again, um, oh, the last thing that this also tests for, it tests for bromine. Bromine is usually used in a spa because it's not as, the, the odor and the fumes aren't as powerful when you've got that hot water. And then also the thing to consider is um, that if you have a salt pool, it, this will register as chlorine salt the salt the, the level of sanitizer that is being produced will register as chlorine now this doesn't test for salinity level that's a whole nother product and i'm going to be doing a product review on a couple of those pretty soon so stay tuned Alrighty, so i am at one of my clients pools and i've got my seven in one test strips so again the diagram is pretty easy on the back if you notice there's a little diagram right here it shows where the thumb is holding the the test strip, all right? So I take this test strip out. You notice there's an end where all the little tabs are there. Those are the measuring uh, 
pads and then you just hold it like this okay and again all i'm going to do is again the instructions on this say to hold it for about watch for about 10 to 15 seconds and you get an accurate reading remember the two things that i'm really looking for are at the top here the total hardness and at the bottom the cyanuric acid okay now one thing to make sure when you dip this in the pool don't shake it, okay? According to these instructions, do not shake it. It's always good to follow instructions. So I'm gonna dip it in the pool, pull it out of the pool, and we're gonna take a look at it, okay? So we're gonna, again, I'm going a little bit faster. So you notice the hardness right here. It's quite hard. That's typical in Arizona. We have super hard water, nothing we can do about that, but we'll talk about that later. So going all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice, I'm gonna look at it really quick. My cyanuric acid is between about 100 it's about right just below 100, if you notice, just below 100, and that is at the high end of the ideal range, okay? And again, when you're testing, you can just test one of the weeks that you test, you know, before the season starts, about a month before the season starts, just include those two measurements on your, on your testing and just pay attention to them, okay? So that again is how we test it. Now it's been a little bit longer now, so the color's getting a little bit deeper. So at this point, I wouldn't be looking at an accurate reading, but again, the hardness is obviously really hard. And again, the cyanuric acid, which was at the high end of the ideal range. Now, let's go back and let's talk about what happens if your hardness is high or low, and also what, what happens if your cyanuric acid level is high or low, and what to do about both of those. Okay, so now you know what to test for and how to test for it on the before swim season starts. Now, I wanna go over what happens if you get certain readings? Okay, remember what I talked about with hardness. Total hardnesses are not a lot you can do. Your water is really, really hard, and that's the source water is hard, and you can always test that source water by just filling a cup with your source water from where you get your water source to fill your pool, and just test it. And if the hard, water is really hard, then there's nothing you can do about the hardness. If you've added a bunch of calcium to your pool, or over time it's in increased, and you need to dilute that, what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna have, to, the only way to do it is through dilution. You're gonna to have to drain and refill your pool or at least drain half of it and refill it so it dilutes some of the calcium in there so your water softens up. Oh, quick note, you should never put your water source through your soft water loop. If you have a soft water loop for your house, you don't wanna be running your pool uh, filling water um, from that because again, you're getting, you don't wanna put soft water into a pool. I don't know why, but I've heard that and I've read about it. I just don't know the reasons, but it's not a good idea. It'll also probably overtax your, your, um, your water softener because you're gonna be dumping thousands of gallons in there as opposed to a house that uses, you know, a hundred or so gallons. Anyway, that's just a side note. So if your heart, water hardness is too low though, you're gonna to wanna to add some calcium in there, but don't add too much, okay? Remember, if you're using um, uh, chlorine tablets, there's minerals in that, and so you're gonna get some of that in your pool and it's gonna harden your water up anyway, okay? Now, cyanuric acid, remember I said that's the big one. With cyanuric acid, the big thing to remember is this. If it is high, if your cyanuric acid levels are high, and I'm talking about, you know, they're really, really in the super high end of that test strip, it's the only way to lessen that or get rid of it or lower it is to dilute the water. The only way you can do that is to drain and refill the pool, or you can do what I call a poor man's drain and refill, drain the pool halfway and then refill it. You want to do this before the temperature gets too warm. If it's 80 to 86 degrees out, um, you're starting to get too warm. And if you have a plaster pool or a pebble tech pool, it's possible that that, that surface can dry out too quickly when it's really warm and that can cause cracks and that can be really expensive to fix. So if you do end up draining and refilling your pool, make sure you do it when it's cooler, like before spring or after or in the fall and somewhere in between, okay? So again, if your cyanuric acid level is really high, you're gonna to have to drain your pool and refill it. And then please watch my video on that subject. I'll put a link in the description below. And then also watch my video on startup chemicals, what and how to add them, okay? Because one of the biggest mistakes people make after they drain and refill their pool is they go to some pool supply store or they start dumping tons of cyanuric acid slash stabilizer into their pool. And then they end up oversaturating it and they're back to square one. So when you add your cyanuric acid to your freshly uh, changed water, 
add it slowly, watch my video on that because like I said, I tell you very specifically how to add that cyanuric acid in your startup chemicals. Add it one pound at a time and retest your water until it gets to the low end. The cyanuric acid reading ends up at the low end of the ideal reading. That way you're not gonna oversaturate your, your pool water molecules and have to start all over again, okay? So remember that if it's high, I mean, if it's high, you've got to drain and refill your pool. If it's low, then you're going to you're gonna need to add cyanuric acid. And again, watch my video on cyanuric acid, what it is and how to, how to test for it and all that kind of stuff. I'll put links in the description below so that you can watch those videos. Suffice it to say, if your cyanuric acid level is low, like it's not reading in the low end, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to add cyanuric acid. It usually comes in granular form. And what I tell people to do, I'm going to just nutshell it so maybe you don't have to watch the video. Test your pool water, see where your cyanuric acid level is, okay? Then with your filter pump motor running, very important, you're going to take a pound of cyanuric acid, it's also called stabilizer, and you're going to pour it directly into your skimmer basket. And that is going to crack, because the suction is to the skimmer, you're going to, you're going to quickly erode that and it's going to get distributed into the pool. Wait about an hour or two, Test your system again. Remember, you're running the filter pump the whole time. See where your cyanuric acid levels are. If they're where they need to be, you're done. If not, repeat the process only one pound at a time. Don't be go going in there. I don't care what a pool supply company tells you. Don't go dumping in five pound bucket at a time and things like that. You're going to run the risk of oversaturating your pool and then you're back to square one of having too high cyanuric acid levels and you're going to have to drain and refill your pool, which is a waste of money and water. So add it slowly, one pound at a time. Let the filter run. You know, you're adding it to your skimmer basket and let it run, dilute it a couple hours, test it, see where you're at. When you get to the level you want it to be at, you're done. You should be fine. But remember, keep it at the low end of the cyanuric acid range. And one of the reasons is because if you're using chlorine tablets, the chlorine tablets, usually the three inch tablets, are called three inch stabilized chlorine tablets. The stabilizer, you guessed it, is cyanuric acid. So you're adding small, very small amounts of cyanuric acid to your pool every time you use your chlorine tablets. And the theory is that it keeps your pool uh, stabilizer or cyanuric acid levels where they need to be. Um, so you should be okay. It's not gonna kill your pool um, to use the tablets. It's a negligible amount. And it takes, again, like I said in my other video about changing your pool water, why and when. Uh, usually in Arizona, people have to change out their pool water between every five to seven years. Anyway, hope that helps. So there you go, folks. That is my video on what to test your pool chemistry for before the swim season starts. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions or comments, remember you can post them in the comment section below. Or if you'd like to email me directly, you can do that as well. My email address is going to come across the bottom of the screen here. It is kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. I want to thank you again for watching. Remind you to like, subscribe, and share my channel with everyone you know. And until we meet again, remember, as always, have fun be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and elderly folks and pets around water, and I will see you next time.